Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the channel, we are going to take a nice, casual, probably a pretty long look at a incredibly superb game of paranormal investigation, and that is called The Unseen World. So I just bought this on DriveThruRPG. I paid for the physical book and the uh, the PDF. And I was going to wait until I got a copy of the physical book to do this video. But I started reading the PDF and I kind of instantly fell in love with the whole vibe of this game. And so I printed it out and made my own zine and just decided to do a video straight away. Because I think this game is going to appeal to quite a few viewers of the Dungeon Dive. So The Unseen World is a game of paranormal investigation set in a modern day Japan. If you like video games like uh, Silent Hill or Fatal Frame or some of the early, early Persona games like the first couple that were on the original PlayStation or maybe you're into anime like uh, Three by Three Eyes or Doomed Megalopolis, or the Peacock King series, or maybe you like movies like Ring, or Cairo slash Pulse, or Juon, you're probably going to want to check out The Unseen World. And I, there's not a lot of information about this game out there, and I think it deserves a lot more attention. I would put this game in the same kind of camp, in the same category as other tabletop games, like Little Town, especially with its supplement, Eldritch Town, which we have taken a look at before. And we're actually going to take a look at this one again, because this is also a game that I really like. And also games like Alone Against Fear and uh, Four Against the Great Old Ones. So if you're into any of those kinds of things, you will definitely be into Unseen World. So to play Unseen World, well, actually, let's back up. Unseen World is a game created and written by Thomas P. King. And this says that this is a solitary game book of paranormal investigation and horror set in modern Japan. Let's read a little bit about the game here. From ancient times in the modern era, the spirits of the dead in Japan have been continuously revered, researched, and feared. But there must be a bridge between folklore and science. For a modern paranormal investigator, finding that bridge and proving without a doubt that the eternal spirit is real has become your lifelong goal. Get your gear, build a team, and get investigating. But beware, the old folk tales warn of the dangers of angry spirits for a reason. The Unseen World is a solitary game book where you will make your own investigator travel from town to town to find only the most haunted places. You'll research the tragic history of these haunted locations and then brave the dark places where ghosts dwell in search of paranormal evidence. Gather as much evidence as you can. Show the world of the living that there is a second unseen world of spirits. So to play the game, you'll need a copy of the book. You will need a 10-sided die as well as a six-sided die. You will need a copy of the uh, of your character sheets. So you have your character sheet here and you have your town sheet here. You might need a few town sheets because you will be visiting multiple towns. Of course, you could also erase uh, things that you already have. When you're visiting towns, you will have normal town locations and haunted town locations. Uh, you might want a notebook to keep track of some notes. Uh, if you, especially if you want to use the prompts in here to maybe come up with some kind of story, there is a little bit of journaling, but uh, you guys know when it comes to journaling, I don't do it, I don't like doing a lot of journaling. I know some people are into more journaling, so uh, just have a journal handy just in case you need it. And you will also need a normal deck of playing cards. And the deck of playing cards, you will actually make two sub decks of cards from a single deck. You will make one deck for your challenges, and then you will uh, use another deck for your actions. And we'll talk a little bit about the differences between those as we set up our game here. Uh, I also went and printed out a list of masculine Japanese names and feminine Japanese names as well as a list of some sample Japanese town names because uh, I don't know enough about Japan's uh, naming conventions to come up with all of these on my own. 
So I just wanted to have some examples so I could at least have some somewhat real sounding names as I generate my NPCs and uh, my cities. So at the beginning of the game, the first thing you'll do is you will create your character. And to create a character, it's pretty simple. You will have a name, you have a level. We start at level one. You will keep track of your experience and your skill. Your skill will dictate how certain cards in your action deck work and your number of aces in the deck. And you begin the game with one ace in your action deck. And each ace, the value of each ace is equal to the value of your skill. You have a place to keep track of uh, whether or not you are tired. You need to rest at the end of each day or you will become tired. You will keep track of how much uh, yen you have, how much money. You start with 10,000. You will roll up a random trait. My trait is a loner. Each trait will give you two abilities. As a loner, I am able to, uh, to do the probe action for free. And uh, certain NPCs will react to me in certain ways. You will also have an inventory here and you, you can hold up to eight items in your inventory. You begin the game with two items. You begin the game with a low end, vid uh, low end video camera, which can capture visual evidence. And you also start with a cheap recorder, which can capture audio evidence. As you explore the haunted locations in the towns, you will come across certain types of evidence, visual, audio, and data. And you have to have a way to capture each one of those types of evidence in order to gather that evidence. And as you gather evidence, you can sell that evidence for money by writing blogs or by writing chapters in books or producing documentaries about the paranormal things that you have discovered. And as you play the game, you will also be keeping a track of your overall evidence and that uh, will kind of give you a score at the end of your game. At a certain point, you can also buy an old van so you can have kind of a van that you drive around and the van will allow you to have more uh, inventory slots. And you also have a place here to keep track of different NPCs that you have hired in order to become team members and they can help you investigate. So as you set out to investigate and you set out to do research on these towns and these various locations, the first thing you'll do after creating a character is you will create a town. And there are six different types of towns here. We have seaside towns, mountain towns, cities, old towns, industry towns, and farming towns. And each one of those will have a certain type of locations that can be found there. They will have certain types of haunts, perhaps unique locations and unique haunts. And they will just give you a kind of a guiding principle for uh, for investigating in that town. My first town here is an industry town, and I have called that Asabu. I don't know if Asabu in Japan is actually an industry town or not, but that's the name that I have chosen. And so as I uh, when you create your town, you will also roll up a certain number of locations depending on what kind of town that is and uh, some haunts locations. And so in this industry town, we have the unique location, which is a pawn shop. And the pawn shop has three items. The first, I, I already went to the pawn shop once just to kind of uh, flesh this out. And the pawn shop has one NPC and three items that are available. Uh, the NPC I rolled up, there is a table here for rolling up random NPCs that you will have to keep track of. And I am saying that the NPC at the pawn shop is the pawn shop owner. And it is an old female and her name is Miyu. And she is curious. So that will give her a plus one with interactions with me. So she's curious about uh, my investigation. She's curious about the paranormal. And so as I talk to her, I will have better interactions with her. Uh, she could be anything from shy, mysterious, crude, smug, cowardly, curious, paranoid, all the way to friendly. And those will give you different modifiers. If I decide to hire uh, Miyu as one of my team members, then that bonus can be applied to uh, certain things that I will get to do as well. So at the uh, pawn shop right now, I rolled up, we have a number of common items, uncommon items, and rare items that we can purchase. And there is one rare item and two uncommon items available to purchase at the pawn shop. There is a high-end camera a mic attachment and a digital recorder, which all of those will help me gather more evidence as we investigate the haunt locations. 
In this industry town, there's also a museum that I can go to gather info. And at the museum, there are two NPCs. I don't know who they are yet. And the museum doesn't sell any uh, items there. And there is also a shrine. And at the shrine, there are two NPCs as well as a food item, um, Ofuda, for 1,000 yen. And so those were the random uh, normal locations that I rolled up for my first town. As far as the haunt locations go, there are two haunted locations that I'm trying to investigate in this town as part of my caseload. There is a disused warehouse, and the uh, warehouse has a, the aspect of intense. So there are different aspects that will modify the haunted locations and those will add some kind of modifier that can make them more or less dangerous, more or less haunted. But the intense uh, warehouse adds a plus one to its activity. And for the random activity level, I rolled a four. So actually the disused um, warehouse has an activity level of five. The activity level comes into play when you have encounters at those haunted locations with the spirits. And it kind of dictates how deadly, how dangerous the spirits in those haunted locations are. The second um, location here, the second haunted location is an abandoned school. And the abandoned school has a presence of being cold, has the aspect of cold. And that means I can't probe. And probing is one of the investigative actions that you can take when you are trying to gather evidence. And so uh, just when I, I, I set out to play this game, I thought of uh, an abandoned school being in an industry town. And I wondered about that connection. Uh, maybe the abandoned school, is it abandoned? Is it related to some kind of industrial accident? Maybe there was some kind of chemical leak, um, some kind of poison uh, leaked into the school's water system or something. And so the school has been abandoned and maybe a long time ago, maybe a bunch of students died because of some kind of industrial accident related to this industry town. I don't know. Maybe that's what my character has heard. My character's name is Ryusuke and uh, he is a young paranormal investigator trying to, uh, to make his mark in the paranormal world. So as I gather evidence, after I gather enough evidence, I can start projects and these projects will help me turn that evidence into money to help, help me generate funds so I can continue investigating until the campaign runs out. I can spend uh, from three to 20 evidence and those can be traded in for writing a blog article or a chapter of a book. I can write a magazine article. I can do an online video. I can appear on the news or I can do a full blown documentary. And each one of those will give me a certain amount of money that I can then turn around and spend in order to buy more things. So uh, throughout the game, you will be doing a number of different challenges, and those challenges will be either research challenges or uh, fear challenges. And uh, depending on which one, you will add certain bonuses, but they are always done in the same way. You will create a challenge deck. And at the beginning of the game, your challenge deck will be comprised of all of the sixes, sevens, and eights from a deck and a single five and you will shuffle that up and so that becomes your challenge deck and then you also have your action deck and your action deck is all of the twos threes and fours from a deck of cards and one ace and your ace is your skill card and the value of your ace is determined by the value of your skill attribute and right now because i'm level one my skill is one but that can go up as i'm playing more and so maybe eventually your aces will be worth maybe four or something like that and so these represent all of your abilities to overcome those challenges as well as a timing uh, mechanism because as soon as this deck is out one day has passed and then I have to spend $5,000, 5,000 yen to stay at a hotel. If I don't, then I will become tired, which I will get a minus one to all action checks. And so once you have your action deck assembled, you will draw four cards into your hand. And so I have an ace, a two, a four, and a two. And let's say I was doing some kind of investigative action. I would flip over the top card of the um, challenge deck. And so I would need to get a seven or higher. So I could play my four and then I could decide to push 
And to push, you could draw the top card here and you would add that and that's a six. You're trying to beat a seven or get a seven or higher. I didn't, but let's say I had an NPC that was curious and she would give me a plus one, let's say. So a four, five, six, seven. So I would overcome that challenge. And then all of the cards spent would be discarded. So you would have fewer cards left in your action deck. And so that's how um, actions are taken. And like I said, there are two main types of actions. There are in, uh, research actions and fear actions. And fear uh, encounters, those happen when you go into the various haunt locations and you will get scared by certain things. And so you will have to overcome your fear or else you will lose willpower. And if your willpower ever goes to zero, uh, then that case has been closed and you can no longer gather evidence at that haunted location. And there are also three types of evidence, as I said, visual, audio, and data. And you have to have a way to capture each one of those different types of evidence in order uh, to, to, to gather it. Okay, so I reshuffled. I have an ace, a two, a two, a two. Not very good, but that does mean that I have a lot of threes and fours left in my action deck. And there are a number of different actions you can take. You can rest at a hotel for 5,000 yen. You can move to a new location. You can spend evidence, and uh, that's how you uh, spend evidence by doing projects in order to gain more money. You can buy items that are available in your town. You can do research actions, and research actions can be triggered by NPCs or different locations that might provide information like this museum location, or you can investigate. And to investigate a haunt location, you have to have gathered three pieces of information about that location before you can investigate it and gain evidence. So there's kind of a hierarchy here. You want to research for information. You have three points of information, then you can investigate, and then you want to investigate to gather evidence. And so that's kind of how the game progresses. So uh, let's uh, play some of this game here. Let's play some of the Unseen World and see how it goes. So I have, uh, I've gone into my industry town. I've heard about this abandoned school. I've heard about this haunted warehouse. And I'm trying, I want to investigate those locations. So I come into Asabu, the industry town. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the pawn shop. I want to see what kind of uh, equipment they have. Maybe I've heard that this pawn shop has some cool uh, technical gear that would be good for me. I go to the pawn shop and I've already rolled up the pawn shop owner. Again, her name is Miyu. She's uh, an old uh, woman and she's curious. So I will get a plus one to my interactions with Miyu. Um, so I am going to, to go to that location. It does cost me one action. And so I'm going to spend one card in order to do that. So I've moved in to uh, the pawn shop there because that is an action uh, move to a location. Okay, for my next action, I am going to I'm going to do a research action and try to gather some information from from me. I'm going to talk to her maybe about if she you know, she's older, maybe she has heard some of the rumors about this abandoned school. So, you know, I'm kind of fishing for information. I'm telling her I, I'm here to investigate. And uh, let's see if she has any information. Now, let's see what the uh, uh, challenge level will be. It is a seven. OK, so I need to get a seven or higher in order to gather information from Miyu. I have a ace, a two, and a two, so not very good. I'm going to choose to blind draw the top card of my action deck for my first card here, and let's see what it is. It's a four, okay. Now, Miyu is curious, so she will give me a plus one to my interaction. So right now, my interaction here is a five, and I'm going to push, and so let me look up pushing real quick. Pushing will allow you to, uh, to draw the top card of the action deck and add it to the check, increasing your total. But pushing also will remove cards from your action deck, thus increasing the time that it takes to do this kind of research action. But I'm going to push, so I'm adding a three, so a seven plus the plus one because she's curious is an eight. And so I meet or beat the challenge level, so we'll discard the challenge level. We will discard our cards from that we used for that uh, test. I will draw one more card into my hand. 
So now I have a four, a two, a two, and an ace. And I have uh, talked to Miyu, and she seems to remember something about that abandoned school. Uh, maybe she went to the school there, or maybe her sister did. I'm not quite sure how old she is, but she seems to remember something. And so I'm going to roll up on my first piece of information that I've learned about that abandoned school. And a three. Okay, so a three. There was a fire. Hey, that's nice. So the key word for this abandoned school for info number one is fire. Fire. A ravaging fire went out of control. Uh, people are still cautious around flames, and it's not difficult to find in uh, find where in town the fire started. I think it was probably some kind of of chemical fire related to whatever this industry town was uh, was producing at the time, some kind of uh, polluted material or something like that. So then there are different uh, parts of, of your secondary information related to the keyword of your first piece of information. So as I uh, do more research in the town and I find out more information, I will learn more information about the fire that started at that school. So right now, though, I do need to check off that we've already gathered information from Miyu. And so we're going to put a plus here. And that means that uh, it's going to be harder to gather information from her again. Maybe we've tapped out all of her knowledge about the school. And so here, uh, NPCs, if you succeed a research check, write a plus in the NPCs tick box um, if you inquire in town. It's less likely that they would know anything else. The PCs modifier is reduced by two. So that would give her actually a modifier now of minus one. And so if I ask her more about this school, then uh, I will have to subtract a one from my total, making it harder to do research. OK, so I, do, I only have 10,000. Uh, let's look at these items here. We have a high end camera. So the high end camera was a rare item here. Uh, high end camera. High-end camera, it'll give me a plus two to any visual evidence gathered, but that costs 50,000 yen. I have nowhere near that close. Uh, let's see, an uncommon item. We have a mic attachment and a digital recorder. Okay, let's see here. Where's the mic attachment here? Uncommon items, upgraded mic attachment, adds audio to your camera's evidence type. You can move this item to new cameras. Okay, so I could add that to my camera, which would allow me to gather visual and audio information or evidence. And we also have a digital recorder. A digital recorder will allow me, it's a better audio recorder, so it'll give me plus one evidence. And that only costs 8,000 yen. That might be something I want to invest in, but not right now because I only, well, yeah, I only have 10,000 that would not allow me to stay at a hotel. So I think I'll say goodbye to Miyu. Uh, thank you for the information about the school. And I do have my eyes on that digital recorder. So maybe I'll be back to buy it. But I just don't have I just don't have the money right now. So I think I want to go to the museum next and see if the museum has any information about uh, the school. Maybe it's a museum about uh, the town itself, the town's history. And so there might be something about the fire. So I will spend one action card to move to the museum. And then I will draw another card into my hand. Okay, nice. I have a four, four, two, and an ace there. And now I'm at the museum. And I know from setup that the museum has two NPCs. So let's uh, roll up those NPC, NPCs here. And that's three, uh, three D10s. So a one, we have a male and age four is um, an adult. And let's roll up their personality. A six, uh, they are cowardly. So that would be uh, plus zero. Okay, and the second NPC, we have a two uh, male and age seven um, adult. And their personality, three, is uh, they're crude. So crude will give me a minus one. 
So when you hire NPCs, if they have a positive bonus at the beginning and you hire them as one of your team members, then that will give you, you can use them when you do a check in the future for that bonus. If they have a negative bonus, then you can also use them and that negative bonus actually applies to the challenge level. So they, as you hire NPCs, uh, they will always help you. You can't hire an NPC that will kind of impede your investigation. Okay, so we have two males here. Uh, let's go ahead and write down some information about the museum. I'm going to see if there are, see if there are any um, ex exhibits about the school. And while I'm uh, uh, while I'm looking around the museum, I'm looking at all the exhibits. I'm looking at all the um, the installations and everything. I do come across a a little a little exhibit about the the history of the school and the famous school fire that happened at this school. And there are two other uh, males, two other uh, gentlemen hanging around, uh, also looking at these exhibits as well. Uh, they are adults. They're a little bit older than I am. And so I can actually ask them if they know anything as well. Uh, the cowardly, uh, the first NPC, uh, let's find out his name here. Um, his name will be uh, Shiro. Okay, uh, Shiro there. And NPC number two. So Shiro is the coward. And uh, the second NPC here, his name will be Hiro. And he is the uh, crude guy there. So he's a little gruff. Um, maybe he knew somebody that went to the school and uh, these this kind of exhibit is maybe upsetting him because um, it's not really telling him the truth about it. He, he knows that there was something that the town is trying to hide. And he knows that something that the town was producing in its factories caused the fire. But perhaps the museum is uh, maybe not acknowledging that. They're kind of keeping it under wraps. And so he's a little mad. He's crude. He's mad about this. But I see that. And I, and I want to know why, he, why this exhibit is upsetting him. So let's see if I can uh, pry some information from Hiro there. Hiro. And so let's see, I will do another research action. So that will cost me one card here. I will get rid of my ace because that's only worth one right now. I'm not very good. And so my research action here, I will draw a card and it's an eight. Ooh, okay, so it's actually going to be kind of a nine there because I'll get a minus one on my test here. So that's pretty hard. Um, I don't really, I don't know if I will be able to convince him. I will play my four. And then I will go ahead and push. Actually, I can't do that because I won't be able to get um, I won't be able to get enough. I don't know if there's any way that I can do that or not. Uh, let's see what happens if I fail my check here. I can't remember what happens if you fail a check against an NPC. Now, failing a research check. The NPC is unwilling to help your investigation or they know nothing useful. Mark the NPC's tick box. You cannot inquire in town using this NPC again in this case. So I don't think there's really any way for me to convince him because of that eight. That was uh, really a, a bad draw there. So I'm not going to push. I'm just going to give up, realizing that uh, Hero will not be able to help me at all in my investigation. Okay, so I will mark off uh, Hero here. Uh, let's see, that was uh, the crude hero, so I cannot uh, use him again. Put an X in his. Oops, I should have used pencil so I can't erase. I'll have to use a new town sheet because I've actually accidentally drawn a couple things and pinned there. So a hero, he kind of uh, moves off. He's obviously, he's visibly upset about what is going on. And uh, maybe uh, Shiro now, is he's kind of cowardly. Maybe he's a little scared of, of how hero was acting. And I'll go up to him and go, hey, do you know do you know anything about what's going on with that guy? Why was he so upset? Did I upset him? And uh, let's see if I can learn any information. 
and a six. Okay, that's more like it. I like those odds there. Whoops, I need to draw back up to four. Okay, so now we have uh, some good cards in my hand here. I will play a four, and then we'll go ahead and push, and we get a seven. Okay, so we overcome that challenge. And we'll discard that. I will draw back up to four. Okay, so uh, from Shiro, we learn a little bit about Hero and why he was so upset. And we learned that uh, it, it is, it's true that, uh, that that Hero, he knew something about the connection between whatever the industry town was producing and the fire. And he was mad that the museum has chosen to kind of cover that up. They admit that there was a school fire, but they don't admit what started it. And so he gives us some more information about our fire. So we have our second piece of information now about the abandoned school. So let's take a look here at our second information, a fire. We will roll a D6 and a two. It was an accident. The town shares a sense of pity over the event, but they shrug it off and say it can't be helped. Such is the way of things. OK, so they're chalking it up to an accident. I think that would be kind of in quotes here. It was an industrial accident, uh, like I, I suspected as I went into this town. And uh, yeah, they're like, ah, sorry, nothing can be done. They are still producing this chemical that caused this really bad accident. They're not taking responsibility for it. They have just abandoned that school and maybe moved the school uh, further away from the industrial part of town. Okay, so I only have one more card left in my action deck. It is getting towards the end of this first day here. And I have conversed with uh, Shiro there. So I will add a plus to uh, that location. And uh, it's looking like I do have the shrine here that is still open. And I've done everything there with that location. I can't remember exactly why you check off the locations. I believe if you've gathered all of the information from a location, then it's kind of uh, closed off. There's kind of nothing left you can do in that location. And I believe that is the case here for the museum because they have no items and I've uh, exhausted most of my possibilities. I could probably, I might be able to still get some information from Shiro, but it will give me, it'll be at a uh, minus two. So we can check off the museum there. So after the museum, I think I'll spend one more action. I will go to the shrine and the shrine also has two NPCs. So uh, let's see what the NPCs at the shrine are. Um, a 10. Okay, so we have a female. And she is um, an adult. And her personality is a 9. She's polite. So that's going to give me a plus 2. So maybe she works at the shrine as kind of a, as a, I don't know, a, a prayer guide or somebody who's there to, uh, to help people facilitate their spiritual needs at the shrine. And so she is open to all kinds of spiritual activity that she knows about. And for our second NPC, we have um, another female. Okay, so female. And let's see how old she is. Uh, seven, an adult. And what is her personality? And eight. Uh, she's paranoid. Uh, paranoid gives you a plus one as well. So uh, she's at the uh, shrine a little bit paranoid about some of these spooky things that are happening, uh, possibly. So we're going to the shrine. And I think I want to talk to the um, to the polite woman first. And she's kind of like a, 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 um, a lay priest or something. I'm not sure what they would be called in Shintoism, but uh, in Shinto. But she's there to help people. Uh, complete their prayer rituals and and make sure that things are are, are running smooth at the shrine. She's kind of a, she's kind of a, a steward of the shrine here. So I'll write a shrine steward. And uh, let's see what her name would be. Uh, let's go for um, Emmy. So E 
am I? And she's polite. And so I tell her that I am here um, investigating the school. And she, of course, is uh, very polite. She's open to, uh, to, to talking about it because uh, she knows that she's there and she often prays over the spirits of the, uh, uh, of the children that died during the school fire. And so let's see if I can get any information about uh, that from her. Ooh, an eight. Okay, but I do have a plus two. Uh, I need to draw my last card here. Okay, so... Um, Ooh, but that uh, that leaves me without any cards to push. So I don't think I can complete this, unfortunately. Uh, let me see what happens if we try to push when we don't have any cards. Do I re uh, do I redraw? Uh, let me see this real quick here. OK, actually, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, yeah, I looked at the rule. And so if you try to push when your action deck is empty, you can't. And so I think I should have. Before going to the shrine, I think I should have uh, elected to stay at a hotel to reset that day. And so I think I'm going to do that. One other thing I forgot is the museum was an information spot. And I knew that because when I rolled up that location of being a museum, it has info. And that should have allowed me to actually add a bonus. So I might have been able to actually get some information from Hero, the uh, crude gentleman there. But uh, I forgot about that. So we'll just keep playing. So I'm going to spend 5,000 yen. And that brings me down to 5,000. So I've stayed uh, the night before going to the uh, shrine. And so we will take our action deck and we will shuffle that back up. And we will draw our hand of four cards for the next day here. So we have a four, a three, a two, and a four. And we will uh, shuffle the discarded cards from our challenge deck. And so at the beginning of the next day, for free, you can start at any location. And so we are starting at the shrine. So I've gone back to the shrine now, and I want to talk to Emmy now about uh, the fire, about the school. So let's draw our challenge card now. It is an eight. Okay, still pretty difficult here, but she is a, a two, so that will give me a plus two. So I will spend my four. So now I'm at a six, and now I'm at seven, eight. Okay, just made it. We'll draw one card to bring me up to four and discard these. And so Emmy has given me uh, more information about the school, and she has given me my third piece of information. And maybe she has told me that um, as she was praying, she has uh, received visions about uh, maybe uh, the school was actually storing some chemicals in its uh, in its basement that the uh, industry forgot about. And so maybe that was the start of the fire. And so we do have our third piece of information. Now, this third piece of information is going to give us information about what we need to summon the spirits when we go to this uh, school here. Uh, so let's roll up that and a one. So we need a candle in order to summon the spirits when we investigate the school. So a candle, uh, a flame, a candle, uh, that kind of makes sense there. So according to some, you must light a candle at midnight in order to summon the ghost. And it seems candles are popular around town. Do people summon the spirit as a hobby or is it just a dark novelty trend? And so... Uh, even though there are no candles for sale in this town, you can always, I believe you can always buy common items. Uh, let's look at buy items here. Um, an investigator needs gear to improve the quality of your equipment, um, evidence, or increase your odds of making it through the investigation. Common items are available in all towns at all town locations. These ubiquitous items are always nearby in convenience stores and shops and are considered within walking distance. Okay, I'm already at the shrine. I think the shrine would actually probably sell candles. And so maybe I learned, I did, I learned that piece of information that I do need a candle from Emmy at the shrine as the shrine steward. And she says, hey, it just so happens I have a candle that you can buy. And uh, hey, how does that, <laughs> uh, very, very uh, convenient there. And so we will buy a candle for 500. Now there is a chance that these candles can become destroyed. So I think I will buy two candles and that will bring me down a thousand yen here. So that'll bring me down to 4,000. 
Okay, and now I have two candles in my inventory. Okay, so I've gathered the three pieces of information I need to investigate the abandoned school. And I still have a lot of cards in my action deck, so I think this is going to be a good opportunity to go to the abandoned school and investigate the fire, take my candles there, try to summon, summon the ghost and figure out what is going on. So I will spend one card to move to the school, to move to a haunted location. I will discard my ace because that is only worth one. And now I am in the abandoned school. The abandoned school is cold, so I can't probe there. Um, I always forget, I forgot that I could probe for free, but that's not really going to help me there. And I also forgot about my my ability as a loner. Uh, some of the NPCs, I might have been able to get a, a better modifier. So I do need to remember my abilities when I'm in the next town. But uh, let's see, activity three. So that means that there's going to be three encounters at the abandoned school. Uh, let's go to the abandoned school encounters here on page 33. Okay, so encounter tables for the abandoned school. So as you have encounters in the school, you will have uh, fear checks. And this is where the horror comes in. Okay, so my first encounter here at the school is going to be a 10. And uh, resolve the background encounter matching your first information keyword on page 59. Reroll if you get this encounter again. Oh, interesting. I have not seen this table yet. Okay. Let's go to 59 here, the background encounter. My first uh, uh, encounter here was with fire. So let's uh, read this fire. So I'm investigating this paranormal uh, site, this haunted school site. I walk in and what happens? I can smell the smoke before it appears. All around you, the smoke accumulates, blocking all other light. But there is light, the bright orange of a hungry flame. Uh, maybe I can hear kids screaming. Uh, maybe they're trapped in the door. They're trapped in the classrooms. I'm getting this premonition of the fire that has grown in this school. It grows and the heat, there is no heat. As you stare into the cold flames, a body engulfed in fire emerges screaming for help. They reach out to you. It all fades so fast. You can't believe it was there just a second ago. Oh, interesting. Okay, I lose one willpower, so I go down to seven willpower. So your willpower generates after you stay at a hotel, but uh, you can't stay at a hotel in between haunt investigations. I need to complete all of this. And now, so what do I do? I have a fear check at minus one. So that'll give me a minus one to my total. Uh, but let me read, let me read my, my um, loner here. Probe is a free action and you have a plus two to a fear check, but I can't probe at the school, so I can't utilize that. Okay, so I'm going to be at a minus one to this fear check. Uh, let's see what the difficulty will be. A six, okay, not too bad, not too bad here. Uh, let me draw one card to bring myself up to four. I will play the four. Uh, maybe I, sh I probably should have hired an NPC Poor planning on my part. Hey, I'm a novice investigator. I don't really know things yet. I will push. And yes, a seven minus one is six. So we overcome this fear challenge. I will draw back up to four there. Okay, now let's see what happens here. So we overcame that, that fear check. So now we can gather as much evidence as we can. We have one visual evidence, one audio evidence, and one data. I have a way to gather visual and audio, but no... Uh, data. So I have two evidence now. So I can write two in my evidence and my overall campaign evidence you will keep track of. We also have two. Okay, so we have overcome that first um, activity. So now uh, we have our second encounter at the abandoned school. Okay, let's see what uh, this will have in store for us. A six. Okay, uh, your footsteps echo down the hall. And each time you stop, the silence swells again. But a crackle from the loudspeakers breaks the silence. Uh, the distorted school chime rings from the speakers briefly before fading away. Um, a fear check. And we can also gather two audio evidence. So we hear uh, this, some kind of announcement. 
uh, crackling through the speakers. It's an old scratchy recording of uh, maybe a recording of uh, uh, of the principal who doesn't really know what's going on. And he's tell- uh, telling the kids to stay in the classrooms. And that's how come they died. Ooh, very creepy. I like that. Okay, so we need to overcome a fear challenge here. And uh, let's go ahead and draw our challenge. It's a seven. And we have no bonus, no penalty for this one. I will play uh, my four here and let's push and a seven. All right, we got lucky. Excellent. Okay, so we did that. We overcame that challenge and we have two more pieces of audio evidence. So that will bring us up to four evidence and four campaign evidence in total. Okay, so we have we have to do one more encounter before we can close this location. An eight outside you look over the building and it's many dark windows some windows are broken a sad sight in a window on the east side of the building a tiny light flickers a small a small like a candle flame uh, maybe this is the last little bit of flame that is extinguishing that is going out as the fire has uh, subsided a feeling of watchful eyes comes over you um, a light moves uh, passing into a wall and out of sight. Uh, maybe we see uh, some um, remnants of these burned children that are moving throughout the school. So we have another another fear check. And let's see here. Okay. All right. Fear check at six. I will play my four and we will push and draw a two so that uh, we overcome that. And what was the evidence on that one here? It was two visual evidence. I can capture that visual evidence. I, I hold my camera up. And so now we have collected six evidence. We've collect, collected a lot of evidence um, about this abandoned school and we have completed the haunt there. So we will mark off the abandoned school. Okay, but now we have one more thing that we need to do to close out this case here. And let's read about closing out a case. So closing a case, once you have reached the end of investigation by resolving all the encounters or losing all willpower, the ghosts weaken and activity subsides. Uh, discard all challenge cards used during this investigation. Mark the haunt locations tick box on your town sheet. You cannot investigate this again. Determine if your summon items survive the night. Roll a D6. A four. If the result is less than the location's activity level, it's not. The activity level was three. If the result is greater than the activity level, the item is intact and you can use it again on another investigation. Okay, so now we can clear all of the NPC and town location checkboxes. So now we can go back to these locations and now we can use them to gather information about the disused warehouse. Uh, you must pay each team member. I haven't hired anybody yet, so I don't need to pay anything. And I also can clear those boxes so I can use them again. And now I can spend my evidence to earn more money because I definitely need some more money. I have six evidence. So how am I going to use my evidence? I can publish a blog article for 5,000 yen. I can write a chapter in a book. I can write a magazine article for uh, for 10,000. Let's see, what's the chapter in a book? Uh, book chapters to your inventory to track how many chapters you've completed. When you have six chapters, your book is complete. Gain 120,000. Ooh, so that's kind of an investment in your future. But I need money now. That's really cool. So you can write, as soon as you write six chapters, you can publish your book for 120,000. Man, that's the biggest one. That's more than a full documentary. Um, I'm going to write a magazine article and that will cost five. So I have one evidence left. I need my total evidence though for my campaign is six. So that doesn't go down. Only the evidence, uh, the current evidence you have that you spend. And so I have written my magazine article about the abandoned school. I have uh, connected its. Um, I've connected it to the to to the industry to the chemicals used, and I gained ten thousand. So that will bring me up to fourteen thousand. Now I'm not sure about experience points here. Um, let's see here. Um, experience points. I need to find out how many experience points I earned. Uh, record all evidence. 
also add the evidence total to your campaign, you earn one XP for each completed encounter. Okay, so I had three encounters at that school, so I actually have three XP, and I need 10 XP to level up. Okay, so that is, uh, that is the Unseen World. Now, uh, this town has one more haunted location, and so I could decide to stay in this town, or I could move to another town. As you move to new towns, you can use a new town sheet and you can uh, create your new town. But as you do so, your challenge deck will become um, more difficult. And so when you move to a new town, you discard the one of the lowest cards in your deck. So in this case, I would discard my five. And then you add one of the next cards so you would add a nine as you add all of the nines then you can as you continue moving from one town to the next you will add your tens when you add your final 10 to your challenge deck that will signify the end of this campaign and then you have one final investigative uh, scene in a haunted location and that will always end, your games will always end in the castle here. And there are four floors of this castle and you have to move your way up from the start up to the fourth floor where you, where you will have your final encounter with some uh, crazy malicious spirit or something, some malevolent spirit. And so yeah, that is Unseen World. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this story that we uh, learned about the abandoned school. And uh, I think this game is really, really cool. It takes a lot of boxes for me. Very light on the journaling. Of course, you could journal more if you wanted, but I'm not a big journaler, but I like journal games. I think my journaling is kind of making these videos. And I think making videos is a really good way of journaling uh, when you're playing these kinds of games. Um, I like all of the different towns and when you create a town, you will roll up a random town. So let's say we went to a new town and it was a four. It was an old town. Um, an old town has two locations and three haunt locations. You step out of one of the smallest train stations you've ever seen. Uh, the only person to exit the train, in fact. And after an hour, you've seen the entire town and what's here. Few buildings, many ghosts. It has a unique location with an antique shop. Um, it has a book of folklore, a book of ghosts, so it sells some unique items there. And then it also has a possible unique haunt, a historic street. And so when you roll up your haunt locations, you will roll up on this chart here. And if you roll up, um, you can roll up your haunt locations. Your haunt locations are here. If you roll an 8 to a 10, then your town does have that town's unique haunt. And then you will also randomize your activity level for each haunted location. And yeah, it's just a really neat game. It creates some great atmosphere. I think the prompts are interesting. I think the way that the, the various uh, the information is linked, the way that you can connect the information like you really are investigating. I love the idea of turning your, your gathered evidence into these projects. I think that is fantastic. Um, you could actually write a little story as your magazine article. Um, we have kind of created an online video here. So I, I just think that is fantastic. It's uh, very easy to play. It has good structure. And I think the rules are pretty simple. While you are reading it, um, things maybe don't make a lot of sense. But once you start plugging in the information and once you start going, things start to make more sense. I like how I can buy more things to help me gather more and to help me gather different types of evidence. I think that is super cool. But um, overall, uh, this game is great. I can't wait to get the physical edition. I'm hoping maybe it's a little bit bigger. But uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend the Unseen World. Um, especially if you are into games like Little Town, Four Against the Great Old Ones, or Alone Against Fear, these kind of horror-based, uh, paranormal, supernatural solo RPGs. Uh, this is a fantastic entry into this subgenre, 
And I am so happy that I discovered this just a couple days ago. So, all right, you guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the unseen world from Thomas P. King. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.